Florida, Part 3 The Gold Coast Table of Contents, Florida, Part 3 The Gold Coast This is a brief but comprehensive overview of Florida, Part 3 The Gold Coast With visiting and touring Information Geography History Attractions And other points of interest Dr. Sidney Socloff Dr. Sydney 22 at gmail.com 2022 Narration by Dr. Sydney Socloff Zoe Phonemes And Nathan Cole Tove For a complete discussion of YouTube navigation Please go to tinyurl.com slash yt navigator Chapter 1 The Florida Gold Coast this is a vintage Florida picture postcard. Here is a map of the state of Florida. Florida is quite a long state. The distance from Pensacola in the western end of the Panhandle to Jacksonville is 335 miles. The distance from Jacksonville to Miami is 317 miles. The distance by road from Pensacola to Miami is 672 miles and to Key West it is 832 miles. The Gold Coast is a region of Florida that runs along the southeastern coast of the state between Palm Beach and Miami. Here are various regions of Florida. The various coastal regions of the state have been given distinctive names. The Gold Coast includes the cities of West Palm Beach, Boca Raton, Pompano Beach, the famous spring break town of Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, Miami, and Miami Beach. The Gold Coast includes a multitude of beach cities and towns. The southern part of the Gold Coast from Pompano Beach, just north of Fort Lauderdale, down to Miami, is almost a solidly built-up urban area. The Gold Coast from West Palm Beach south to Miami is a relatively narrow strip of land. No more than about 20 miles wide. Sandwiched between the Atlantic Ocean on one side and the Everglades Swamp on the other. Here is a satellite view of the same area. We see the densely populated area from Miami north to Fort Lauderdale and continuing to a lesser extent up to West Palm Beach. Here again. We see the densely populated area from Miami north to Fort Lauderdale and continuing to a lesser extent up West Palm Beach. The investments made in real property were termed gold, hence the name Gold Coast. The name Gold Coast was well deserved from about the 1920s onward. With the arrival of Henry Flagler's railroad, more and more northerners started arriving. New buildings and architecture flourished and are known today as the Art Deco style, most evident in Miami's South Beach. Initially only the wealthiest Americans were establishing footholds and second residences. This was first towards the northern end of the Gold Coast and in Palm Beach. But not to much later more common folks started coming and taking up residence. Many of the hotels and other buildings originating from the 1920s and 1930s have been refurbished and constitute the backbone of Miami's tourism and convention hospitality industry. Examples of these hotels are the Eden Rock, the Fontainebleau Hilton Resort, the Clevelander Hotel Miami Beach, the Savoy Hotel Miami Beach, the Sagamore Hotel Miami Beach and the National Hotel Fort Lauderdale Fort Lauderdale is in southeastern Florida in the Gold Coast region just north of Miami Fort Lauderdale is in Broward County only 25 miles north of Miami Fort Lauderdale is known as the Venice of America due to its extensive and intricate canal system. The Intracoastal Waterway passes through Fort Lauderdale. The Atlantic Intracoastal Waterway runs from Norfolk, 
Virginia to the Florida Keys. It consists of natural inlets, saltwater rivers, bays, sounds, and artificial canals. It provides a navigable route along its length, without many of the hazards of travel on the open sea. Fort Lauderdale, the Venice of America. As of 2021, the city population is an estimated 183,000 with 2 million in Broward County. Fort Lauderdale is known for its beaches, many bars, nightclubs, strip clubs, and overall party atmosphere. The first inhabitants of the area were Seminole Indians who arrived in the 18th century. During the Second Seminole War, Major William Lauderdale led his Tennessee volunteers into the area and raised New River Fort on the site of the modern city in 1838. In 1893, a young Ohioan named Frank Stranahan arrived and built a house that served as the first trading post, post office, bank and town hall of the area. The Stranahan house was built near the site of the New River Fort and still stands today as a museum, open to the public. Built in 1901 by the father of Fort Lauderdale Frank Stranahan, this house once served as a trading post for Seminole trappers who came here to sell pelts. It's been a post office, town hall, and general store, and now serves as a museum of South Florida pioneer life containing turn-of-the-19th-century furnishings and historic photos of the area. Close by the old Stranahan House is the modern-day river walk in downtown Fort Lauderdale along the New River. Also located in downtown Fort Lauderdale is the old Fort Lauderdale Village Museum and Historical Society. On the River Walk, where Flagler's Railway crosses the New River. The museum tells the story of the region from the pioneers of Fort Lauderdale to the present day, through its four historic structures dating back to 1905. They are the New River Inn, the Philemon Bryan House and the Acetylene Building, which produced acetylene gas to light the New River Inn, and the 1907 King Cromarty House Museum, which belonged to one of the first pioneer families in Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale was officially incorporated as a town in 1911 and began as a predominantly agricultural community, raising dairy cows and citrus groves. Fort Lauderdale and its surrounding suburbs experienced tremendous growth following the end of World War II. The economy of Fort Lauderdale relies heavily on tourism. During the 1970s, the city was known as a spring break destination for college students. Since the 1980s, police have cracked down on underage drinking and other illicit activity. And the tourist dollars have been largely redirected toward cruise ships and other nautical recreation. Fort Lauderdale now attracts a more sophisticated and affluent crowd. Fort Lauderdale is a major manufacturing and maintenance center for yachts. The boating industry is responsible for over 100,000 jobs in the area. With its many canals and proximity to the Bahamas and Caribbean, Fort Lauderdale is also a popular yachting vacation stop. Canals permeate much of Fort Lauderdale-like streets. An excellent way to see Fort Lauderdale is to take a cruise on the New River and the many canals. Much of Fort Lauderdale can be seen from cruises on the New River and the canals. River Walk is in downtown Fort Lauderdale along the New River. This shows the location of the New River and the River Walk in downtown Fort Lauderdale. On the south side of Fort Lauderdale is Hollywood, Florida. Strolling along the Hollywood Beach Boardwalk is a popular activity. Port Everglades is one of the busiest cruise ship terminals as well as being the 13th largest cargo port in the United States. Chapter 6 Miami Miami, Miami. Shine on my love and me So we can stroll.
by the of the Miami is the largest city in the South Florida metropolitan area, which comprises Miami-Dade County, Broward County, and Palm Beach County. It is the largest metropolitan area in the southeastern United States and the sixth largest metropolitan area in the entire United States. Miami and the surrounding metropolitan area are situated on northern Biscayne Bay, between the Everglades and the Atlantic Ocean. Bridges over Biscayne Bay connect Miami to the islands of Miami Beach and Key Biscayne. To this day Miami has preserved its unique architecture and colorful facades. This is a large city, but it tends not to resemble Chicago or New York in that there is hardly any gray or just bare stone. Colors are vibrant. Shapes and themes are various. Miami has been the subject of several movies and TV series, such as Moon Over Miami in 1941. Miami Vice. 1984 to 1990, and CSI, Miami from 2002 to 2012. The Golden Girls from 1985 to 1992. Miami was officially incorporated as a city in 1896, with a voting population of just over 300 in 1940. 170,000 people lived in the city. Now the city proper has 480,000 people. In the larger metropolitan area population is 6.2 million. Miami's explosive population growth in recent years has been driven by migration from other parts of the U.S., especially the northeastern and midwestern states, as well as by immigration from Cuba, the Caribbean, and other parts of Latin America. Greater Miami is regarded as a cultural melting pot, heavily influenced by its large population of ethnic Latin Americans. The region's importance as an international financial and cultural center has elevated Miami to the status of a world city. Because of Miami's cultural and linguistic ties to North, South, and Central America, and the Caribbean it is sometimes called the Gateway of the Americas. Florida's large Spanish-speaking population and strong economic ties to Latin America also make Miami and the surrounding region an important center of the Hispanic world. Chapter 7 The History of Miami Spaniards in the 16th century found a village, perhaps 2,000 years old, of Tequesta Indians on the site. The name Miami, probably meaning Big Water or Sweet Water may have referred to Lake Okeechobee or to local Native Americans who took their name from the lake. In 1567 the Spanish established a mission there as part of a futile attempt to subdue the Tequesta. They ceded the area to Great Britain in 1763, but regained it in 1783. After the United States acquired Florida from Spain in 1821. Fort Dallas the site of present-day Miami, was built in 1836 as a base during the Seminole Wars. A few settlers, among them Julia D. Tuttle, known as the mother of Miami, and William B. Brickle, gradually moved into the area. Fort Dallas was built on the Miami River near Biscayne Bay. Later the name of the settlement was changed to Miami. A freeze during the winter of 1894 to 1895 killed most of Florida's citrus crop. During the big freeze of 1894 to 1895, Julia Tuttle reportedly sent Flagler a fresh orange blossom to prove that the freeze had not reached Miami. This convinced Flagler to extend the railroad down to Miami. Flagler extended his Florida East Coast Railway to Miami after Tuttle and Brickle each gave him half of their land holdings for the project. Flagler then dredged the harbor, built the Royal Palm Hotel, and promoted tourism. Miami was incorporated that same year of 1896. During the Florida land boom in the early and mid-1920s, Miami's population more than tripled. 
but the collapse of this speculation, compounded by a devastating hurricane in 1926, dampened Miami's fortunes for more than a decade. Miami Beach underwent a brief construction boom in the mid-1930s, when many Art Deco buildings were erected. But this came to an end when, during World War II, soldiers replaced tourists at the oceanfront hotels, and long stretches of beach were converted to rifle ranges. In 1945, many soldiers returned to the Miami area to live. In the 1950s and 60s, Latin American immigrants, particularly those from Cuba, began to arrive in large numbers. During the 1980s Miami gained a reputation as a center of the illegal drug trade, and several acts of violence were directed against foreign tourists in the early 1990s. However, by the end of the 20th century tourism was rebounding. In 1992 Hurricane Andrew caused some 50 deaths and considerable property damage to areas of the county just south of Miami, although the city itself was largely spared. The downtown skyline of Miami has a very modern look. The large collection of gleaming, glass-walled skyscrapers is accented with neon lighting at night. Miami's close relationship to Latin America is especially well represented in its ethnic neighborhoods. Several hundred thousand Cuban refugees have settled in the area since 1959. The Little Havana district, just west of downtown, has developed as a largely Cuban enclave within the city. The annual Calle Ocho Festival in Little Havana in March is part of the Carnival Miami celebration draws large crowds of visitors. Little Haiti, to the north of downtown, developed as a primarily Haitian neighborhood after refugees began arriving in the city in the 1990s. A subtropical climate helps to make Miami one of America's great winter resorts. Tourism is a major component of the city's economy. The miles of beaches are lined with glittering skyscraper hotels, are dotted with marinas, yacht clubs and golf courses. Miami is also a center of international banking and finance, business services, manufacturing, including apparel, medical equipment, pharmaceuticals, printing, and metal products, and international commerce. The Port of Miami handles international shipping and is a world leader in cruise ship operations. Miami International Airport also handles international cargo going mostly to Latin America and the Caribbean. The city is served by a highway network that includes the Dixie Highway, Tamiami Trail, and Florida's Turnpike. We will now look at points of interest in the Miami area. This is the Miami Seaquarium. There are museums of history, art and science, as well as several theater, music and dance organizations in the Miami area. Boat tours in the Everglades and sport fishing are among the many popular outdoor activities in Miami. Biscaya Museum and Gardens, built in 1916, is the estate of industrialist James Deering. Vizcaya is an Italian Renaissance-style estate. It contains 34 rooms decorated with 16th through 19th century furnishings and European decorative art. Miami's Para Jungle and Garden is an animal theme park. Miami is home to several professional sports teams, including the Florida Marlins baseball, Miami Dolphins football, and Miami Heat basketball. Metropolitan Miami has many institutions of higher education, including the University of Miami, 1925, in Coral Gables, Barry University, 1940, in Miami Shores, Florida Atlantic University, 1961, and Florida International University in 1965. This is the University of Miami. Founded in 1925, in Coral Gables. Biscayne National Park is just south of Miami, 
and Everglades National Park is to the southwest. Biscayne National Park preserves Biscayne Bay, one of the top scuba diving areas in the United States. 95% of the park is water in addition. The shore of the bay is the location of an extensive mangrove forest. Everglades National Park is just a short distance to the south and west of Miami. Everglades National Park is the largest subtropical wilderness in the United States. The park had rare and endangered species, such as the American crocodile, Florida panther, and West Indian manatee. Airboat tours are a popular activity in the park. This is an airboat tour in Everglades National Park. Everglades National Park has been designated an International Biosphere Reserve, a World Heritage Site, and a wetland of international importance, in recognition of its significance to all the people of the world. Alligators abound in the Everglades. Chapter 11 Miami Beach This is a vintage picture postcard of Miami Beach. Miami Beach is on a barrier island just east of Miami, between Biscayne Bay on the west and the Atlantic Ocean on the east. This is a satellite view of Miami, Biscayne Bay, and Miami Beach. Until 1912 the site of Miami Beach was a mangrove swamp, where growers tried unsuccessfully to establish coconut plantations, but had better luck with avocado groves. John S. Collins, Carl Fisher, and John and James Lummis pioneered real estate development there. And through their efforts a bridge was built across the bay, followed by a causeway in 1920. This is the MacArthur Causeway connecting Miami and Miami Beach. Dredging subsequently added land area to the island. The city was incorporated in 1915 as Ocean Beach, and the name was changed to Miami Beach the following year. Growth was hindered by the collapse of the Florida land boom, a hurricane in 1926, and the onset of the Great Depression. By the mid-1930s, however, the city's fortunes had reversed, fueled by the construction of numerous Art Deco-style buildings. World War II again curtailed the tourist business, but served to popularize the city widely when most of the hotels were requisitioned to house army trainees. Growth boomed after the war, and the region developed as a popular retirement area as well as a tourist destination. This is the Lincoln Road and Washington Avenue business section in Miami Beach in years past. Miami Beach is now a year-round luxury resort and convention center, having no industries and no transportation facilities other than its road links to Miami. The city has museums of art and of Jewish culture, reflecting the city's sizable Jewish community. The Miami Beach Holocaust Memorial includes a 40-foot, 12-meter, bronze sculpture of a hand reaching out of the ground and panels listing names of victims. The population of Miami Beach is about 100,000. Points of interest in Miami Beach include Lincoln Road, the Miami Beach Botanical Garden, and the Versace Mansion. Chapter 12 South Beach South Beach is one of Miami Beach's most popular spots. The South Beach has a large district of restored Art Deco buildings. Art Deco was a popular design movement from 1910 until 1939. Art Deco affected the decorative arts such as architecture interior design and industrial design, as well as the visual arts, such as fashion painting the graphic arts and film. This movement was, in a sense, an amalgamation of many different styles and movements of the early 20th century, including constructionism, cubism, modernism, Bauhaus, Art Nouveau, and futurism. 
Art Deco's popularity apexed during the 1920s. Although many design movements had political or philosophical roots or intentions, Art Deco was purely decorative. At the time, this style was seen as elegant, functional, and ultra-modern. The roots of Art Deco go back to the turn of the 20th century, when in 1901 the Société des Artistes de Courtures was formed in Paris. Their goal was to merge the mass production of modern industrial technology with the decorative arts. Then in 1925, a now famous exposition was held in Paris called Exposition Internationale des Artes Décoratifs et Industriels Modernes. It is from this exposition that the term Art Deco is derived. Although the actual term came into use only much later, this new style was inspired by the machine age, and especially the streamlined shape of airplanes and automobiles. It was applied to architecture, furniture, appliances, trains, and almost everything else, and most especially, to passenger ships. This was a sleek new, streamlined, and especially modern style in the post-World War I days that became a break from the stiff styles of the past. Now the stylistic environment became a vision toward the future where speed, streamlining, and the wonders of modern technology was emphasized. The principal elements of Art Deco are an emphasis on geometrical shapes, parallel lines, and muted pastel colors are favored. A more futuristic development of Art Deco was known as Streamline Modern with smoother lines and sweeping curves. Design elements from ocean liners such as porthole windows and tube railings were borrowed and incorporated into buildings on land. The Architectural District, sometimes called the Art Deco District of Miami Beach contains the largest concentration of 1920s and 1930s resort architecture in the world. These vibrantly colored buildings represent an era when Miami Beach was heavily promoted and developed as a tropical playground. The district was one of the earliest National Register listings to recognize the importance of the architecture of this period. Here is the Normandy Hotel in Miami, which has a streamlined Art Deco style, reminiscent of an ocean liner. Here are more examples of the Miami Art Deco style. This is in the Miami Beach Art Deco Historic District. The Miami Beach Art Deco Historic District. Classic Art Deco buildings from the 1930s and 1940s grace many of Miami's streets, especially in South Beach. This is the Miami Beach Art Deco Historic District. These are Art Deco buildings in South Beach. This is an Art Deco building in South Beach. This shows a tripartite Art Deco facade. These are Art Deco buildings in South Beach. These are Art Deco buildings in South Beach. This is the Carlisle Hotel. This is the Shelburne Hotel in Miami Beach. This is Art Deco Neon. These are Art Deco Neon signs. This is a list of the most populous metropolitan areas of Florida. Note that most are in the southern part of the state. With the notable exception of Jacksonville, the top eight are in the southern part of the state. This is borne out even more clearly by this map of the 2010 Florida Census, shown by county. This heat map of Florida shows the population density by county. This is an anamorphic heat map of Florida that shows the population density by county. Recommended videos, Florida Part 3. The Gold Coast. Recommended video, Top 10 Things to Do in Fort Lauderdale and Miami.
Recommended video, Fort Lauderdale Travel Guide 2021 Downtown and the Beaches. Recommended video, Top 10 Things to Do in Miami and Miami Beach, Florida. Recommended video, Building the Magic City, A History of Miami, Part 1. Recommended video, Building the Magic City, A History of Miami, Part 2. Recommended video, Art Deco in 9 Minutes, Why is it the most popular architectural style? YouTube.bweb link 906. Table of Contents, Florida, Part 3 The Gold Coast. Thanks for watching. Please watch some more of my great videos.